and we are off. So welcome everybody. Thank you all so much for being here this evening, taking some time out of your evening with us here. This is a uh, patch chat. This is a joint program that is done uh, in partnership uh, between us, Chicago Ornithological Society and Chicago Audubon Society. Uh, my name is Edward. I am president of Chicago Ornithological Society. And uh, this episode is featuring the awesome urban oasis hotspot known as Laba Woods. Um, and uh, you may, you know, it's one of those sites where you I feel like you know, it's kind of, some people have definitely heard about it, about it and know all about it. And a lot of people still haven't heard about it, but it is a tremendous site. And especially right now is one of the best places in Chicagoland to observe migration. Uh, so we were very excited to put this uh, program together to talk about and highlight this site specifically uh, and kind of the theme for this whole program series, how to actually do it. If you've never been there or you aren't familiar or you maybe know parts of it, but not all of it, um, how do you go out to a site, especially say in COVID times or by your own, on your own and, you know, observe birds or hike it like an expert and know where to go and how to take advantage of it. And that's the idea behind this program series, Pat Chat. Um, additionally, just to take note that this is a ongoing series. It's not a regularly scheduled one, sort of as we have new sites to feature, but definitely check out uh, our respective websites, chicagobirder.org and chicagoaudubon.org for future virtual events and in-person events now. Uh, to get out here and take advantage of the information and knowledge you're learning and just go out and see some birds. A lot of great programming from both of organizations and we definitely encourage you guys to check those out. Um, and so I think without further ado, I'll go ahead and toss it over to our speaker here today, Jeff Scrantney. Um, I think he introduces himself pretty well in this presentation, but uh, he is the steward for Laba Woods, birder, naturalist extraordinaire, truly knows this site like no other. And we're really lucky that he's able to spend some time with us this evening sharing his knowledge and in-depth experience with this site and how to uh, enjoy experience in bird Laba like a true pro. So without further ado, round of virtual applause here. Jeff, take it away. All right, let me get this up. Hi, my name is Jeff and um, um, I'm Jeff Scrutney. And back in 2006, somebody took me to bird at Labaw Woods for the first time and um, I became a birder. So who am I? And uh, what more can I tell you about myself that might make this presentation interesting to you? Um, I began birding on January 1st of 2016 in Denver, Colorado. It was a very conscious decision to become a birder. And the first day that I went birding, I identified six species of birds, including um, a, go, a, a bald eagle flying over on the Cherry Creek Reservoir first thing as I got there. Um, I also spent two hours trying to ID a ring-billed gull. That was a lot of fun. I missed the ring on the bill. Um, that would have been helpful. Um, so that's how I got started. Um, I read a book called um, uh, The Big Year and uh, Kingbird Highway, and that was what got me hooked. Um, anything where you can list, make a list as well as um, uh, seabirds was, was all good to me and I was, I was all in. Um, since I started birding, I have now submitted 5,323 eBird checklists. I'm a very avid eBird user. Um, my current uh, daily streak is I think I'm at 178 days in a row with an eBird checklist. I have recorded um, 613 birds across the world. So you can guess by that, that I've mainly birded in the United States and that is correct. Um, in the United States, I have heard or seen uh, 563 bird species. There are only, there's only one bird that I have heard and not seen, and that was a black rail in Colorado. On iNaturalist, which I am an avid user of, some would say an addicted user of, I have made 5,311 bird observations of 462 species. And the difference between iNaturalist and eBird is that on iNaturalist, you have to have documentation, which is either a photo or an audio recording. My Illinois life list now includes 383 bird species. And um, I was part of the team that set the Illinois big day high mark record of 191 species. And, and we did that twice now. Um, my Cook County list is 339 bird species. I have been birding at Laba Woods since February 23rd of 2006 when I did my first day of birding there. Um, as you can see, that was um, about um, uh, 35, no, 55 days after I started as a birder. And um, at Laba, I have now seen 196 of the 214 species that have been recorded there. On a naturalist, I have made, uh, I can't read the number because of the chat that's in the way. I have made um, uh, many, let's try this, Jeff. 
I have made nearly 22,000 observations of more than 4,100 species on INAT. Um, I love going out and finding new species as well as finding what lives here. I personally don't believe that you can honor and respect a living thing unless you can name it. Um, now, there are friends of mine who tell you that you have to be able to name it in Latin. I don't go that far, but other people do. Last year in Cook County, I made more than 6,900 observations of more than 2,500 species in Cook County. And of those, 2,200 have been peer ID'd to a species or higher classification. So when I tell you I've seen 2,500 species, I'm not just saying that um, most people would tend to agree with me. And while doing my uh, uh, Cook County iNaturalist big year last year, uh, not only did I observe about 2,500 species, but of those 289 of the species were birds that I documented in 2020, except for two. There are two birds that I was unable to document, a golden eagle, and I'm forgetting the second one right off the top of my head. So aren't I ever impressed with myself? Um, I'm hoping you get a little chuckle out of that, but that just gives you a general rundown of who I am and what I do and how I go about um, looking for and documenting things. Uh, I like to document, I like to create a record, a legacy of what lives here now. And I do it with birds as well as all things that I can find living in the places where I go. So what about Laba Woods? That's what we're here for. You wanna know how to do the Laba Wood thing and that's fair and that's what we're gonna to get to. So what about Laba Woods? Laba Woods, for those of you who don't know, is, is located on um, Chicago's Northwest side. It's uh, bordered by Foster Avenue. You can see it on the South there. And on the um, West is Cicero Avenue. On the North, Bryn Mawr are the breaking points. And then you can see um, the, the, the West entrance there between the residential areas and the grocery store in Gompers Park. So that's, that's Laba Woods. Parking is off of Foster Avenue in the Irene Hernandez Family Picnic Grove. You can see that on the south side and a little bit to the um, east. And then um, there's also parking in the Cicero parking lot with en the entrance off of Cicero. You can see that big snake that goes into this, the Laba Woods area on, on the Cicero side. There's a north parking lot and then there's a big loop south parking lot. And um, that's great. Also, um, if you wanna go there and start from the north, there's street parking on Bryn Mawr. For those of you who don't know, Labau Woods is small. Of the 70,000 acres that compromise the Cook County Forest Preserves, and I think it's important to remind people that this is a Cook County Forest Preserve property. This is not a park. This is not Chicago Park District. This is Cook County Forest Preserve. That matters because there's different rules and regulations that are in place at a forest preserve versus a park or a state park, for example. Um, Labau Woods is 162 acres. Of that, half of it is cut um, lawn grove where people have picnics, and the other half is a floodplain forest, an upland hardwood oak savanna, and an upland wet prairie. Um, you can see there's a line that cuts from basically the um, north northeast side of the property down to the south southwest, coming through about the central part of Foster Avenue, <clears throat> and that's the um, former Weber Spur uh, Railroad grade, and it's a nice patch to walk along that bisects the property from one end to the other. Um, Laba Woods also has a river runs through it, and that's the north branch of the Chicago River, and that runs through basically from the northwest, and it comes south, takes a great big bend, and then straightens out to go again to the uh, south um, east, right by what we call the railroad trussle. And then last um, of major features, the North Branch Trail um, is a blacktop trail that begins up at Foster, down at Foster and Costner. And it goes for 16 miles all the way up to um, the, past the Skokie Lagoons and into um, the Chicago Botanic Gardens. So that's what Labau Woods is and where it is and where you can park. So why is it called Labau Woods? How did it get that name? It's kind of an interesting name, don't you think? I do. That's how it got its name. That's Ella Laba. And this photograph was, um, the source of this photograph was the Times um, um, photographer Hall Hall Hallahan. And he took this on December 7th, 1940. And here Ella Laba is with theater backmeister, um, Ms. John W. Chapman, um, Captain Charles G. Sauer, the superintendent of the Cook County Forest Preserves, um, Ida B. Howard and Ms. 
I think it's Harrison. I can't read that right now. So they're at a ceremony where Snell Woods, which was purchased by the um, Forest Preserve Park District, uh, the Forest Preserve of Cook County in 1920, was renamed after Ella Laban a ceremony at the location that is now known as Laba Woods on November 7th, 1940. And this was to honor her for her pioneering work that she did to help create the forest preserves of Cook County. She was instrumental in making the forest preserves become an entity in 1916. To this day, that stone that you see in the right side photo where it says Laba Woods, when you come in on the Cicero parking, um, uh, into the Cicero parking lot, when you get to the stop sign, if you look straight across from the stop sign, that stone is there to this day. So, Labau Woods, let's talk about the terrain, the tra uh, trail details, and make sure that you understand sort of the lay of the land. Um, Labau Woods is made up of three significant wet areas, wetlands, whatever you want to call them. The first one is dead center there, and we call that the slough. And that was probably a former riverbed. It was also probably dug out at some point in the 1930s, and it is now an ephemeral pond. And that ephemeral pond holds water anywhere from three to 12 months a year. Um, right now, it's kind of low for what we expect. Um, we're not sure how that's going to impact things like um, the tadpoles for the bullfrogs and the uh, American toads that would like to grow there. Um, it's also a great feeding location for a number of birds who eat all those things. Um, there's also the little slough. You can see that sort of straight to the right of Laba Woods, um, the, the main wetland. And then up on the north and west, uh, north and east, um, you see the upland wet prairie. This is, a, this is the reason Laba Woods was saved. The upland wet prairie is a significant type of habitat, microhabitat. It is underlain by a, a three to, to six, eight foot layer of clay. That clay was used by everybody to make Chicago bricks. It was harvested throughout this area. And there are very few places where it is left intact, unpunctured, where it's still a bowl that holds water. Above that bowl, there's a, there's a, a, a type of soil that is very unique. A lot of um, decaying material stays wet a lot of the year. And in that area, there are plants that are very rare to this area. And, and in that area, there are some plants that were once only found there in Northeast Illinois. Seeds from those plants have since been taken out and moved in other places. So if you're gonna go birding at Labai, you need to know what the Weber Spur is and the, the train trestle that crosses the river. And that's dead center in the property, right where you see the star. Um, birding there is, is key. Um, this is what the trestle looks like. From, look, this is looking from the northwest to the southeast. And this is the trestle from up on top, uh, looking to the north northeast, roughly. There are a number of unpaved footpaths along the river, both on the north and south side of the north branch, that go both east and west of the Weber Spur Trail railroad grade. And all of these, all of these offer great birding opportunities. We'll talk about them a little more in a few minutes. Some of the slopes at Laba are rather steep, and I've marked a few of them that are steep and can be slippery. Um, this is one specific one going down on the northeast side of the trestle, going into the little slough area. And though this picture may look innocuous, it's steep, it's slippery, um, the gravel is loose, and you just need to be very careful going down it or approach it from a different direction which is further to the north, you can come down on some really easily marked paths that will bring you in there in a much more gentle path. Um, and we know that, the, the, that these slopes are difficult and, and um, require some maintenance, and we've started working on them. Um, here's a group that did a, um, a slope that was in a dangerous um, slope, and they um, fixed it up, and it, it's now held up for almost four years, and we are trying to address these steep slopes one at a time. We also have uh, to recognize that Laba Woods is a floodplain. Um, floodplains are wet. Floodplains have water. So you need to prepare for a wet place when you go birding. This was one trail that leads from the um, uh, southwest side of the trestle down into the slough area. We have since mitigated it and tried to make it a little better for people to come down. But Laba is wet, 
And one of the things that really bugs us is that people in a wet area will walk on the edges of the trail because you don't want to get your feet wet. Well, I'm telling you right now, you will get your feet wet if you go to Labat most years. This isn't one of those years, but most years, Labat is wet through June. It starts getting wet again in October. You might get three months where it's sort of dry. We chafe at the idea that people walk on the edge of the trail and kill beautiful wildflowers like these because they want to keep their shoes dry. Stay in the middle of the trails, please, and don't create spider trails. Stay on the trails that um, I showed you with the map earlier and don't create new trails. If you see a skinny, narrow trail, chances are it's not one that we want you to be using. If you see a trail brushed over like this, that does not mean walk next to the brush. It means let's not go into that area. Let's stay on the main trail that you're already on. All right, enough of the lecturing. Birding at Labau Woods. This is a I naturalist map of all the different observations that have been taken at Labawids. And you can kind of see through this map where the concentrations of the blue dots are sort of tell you where you should look for the birds. You can see that they're along the river, they're in the slough, they're along the Weber Spur Trail. Those are the thing. And if I would give you general rules of how to bird Labawids, edges, river, trestle, and slough. Edges, river, trestle, and slough. So Labau Woods Forest Preserve, when I first put this presentation together, had recorded 211 species with 3,470 checklists on eBird. Of course, that was before we had three more species that were found in the month since I last gave this presentation. And um, I can't imagine there's anybody who doesn't know this, but um, what, you haven't heard? Um, Bob Dolgan, took a picture of a turkey at Laba, and I was standing right underneath this turkey and didn't see it, so it's not on my life list. Um, I, you have to be living under a rock if you haven't heard that we had a broad-billed hummingbird, uh, basically a Mexican Southern United States hummingbird that somehow made its way to Laba Woods and was seen by people for about a week, uh, about maybe eight, nine days. And while we were looking for the broad-billed hummingbird, a group of us, saw a Western tanager fly into the same tree. This is not that tanager. This is a different tanager that was seen in Elmwood uh, on April 30th, 2016. But I, I, you know, I need to give you a graphic of what a Western tanager looks like. Notice that bright red face, that yellow check on the black wing bar and then the white underneath it. The, the rest of the bird is yellow. That's a Western tanager. And we had one fly in, take the stinger out of a bee and fly away. Never saw it again. No one got a photo, bummer for us. Migration at Laba is always exciting. Um, that's the bottom line. And you know, besides the 214 bird species, by the way, some of you may have noticed that uh, uh, here it says 215. There was one bird that's been recently reported, but I think it was a mis id common bird. And uh, we're trying to get to the bottom of that. So Laba uh, annually has about 45 to 55 birds that um, species that breed in and around Laba Woods. But the big show for us is always um, mid-April through early June when the migrant passerines come through. Um, here you can see rusty blackbird, clay-colored sparrow, olive-sided flycatcher. And then there's the warblers. Everybody loves the warblers at Laba. Laba Woods is a great place to go for warblers. It has recorded 38 species of warblers in the years that we've been keeping track on eBird. Um, that means that it's been 35 of the regularly occurring warblers from Northeast Illinois plus three. Um, every year we get about 30 to 33 species of warblers at Laba. This year we're already at 33. The only normally occurring two Northeast Illinois warblers that have not been seen at Laba this year are the prairie warbler and very strangely, no one has um, recorded a Louisiana water thrush from the site this year. Labau woods can also be excellent for hawk watching. And we regularly see 16 species of hawks flying over Labau woods, including this, which is of course a, a rough leg hawk that uh, we had flying over once when we were doing hawk watch. And I'd like to just get that knocked off as the first area that I, I approach. Yes, yes, indeed. You can do hawk watching at Labau. 
Um, can't get up to Fort Sheridan or even further north to Illinois Beach State Park or out west to um, uh, Green Valley. Um, you can hawk watch right at Laba, the big star in the North Cicero parking lot. It's where we usually set up a picnic table. Come on out. We have scopes. We watch for the birds and we see lots of them actually. Um, we've recorded two golden eagles at Laba Woods. We also get bald eagles every fall and this year every spring. Um, the fall hawk watching days give us regular views of all the normally expected um, migrating hawks. Um, you know, the, the, the occipiters, the um, buteos, um, the kestrel, the, the, fal the falcons, merlin, peregrine. Um, somewhat unusually, we have also recorded a northern harrier. We had a Mississippi kite once, and there was once a goshawk in Laba um, that was there for a couple uh, for about a week in March, I think, of 2016. Uh, Labau also has breeding hawks, and that includes um, Broadwing for the last five years, Cooper's hawk, almost earlier, Peregrine Falcon just to our south. We get um, American Kestrel in the neighborhood. There's a red-shouldered hawk this year, um, it, it, not in Laba, but near Laba. So there's lots of great hawks that that um, are coming through and nesting in Labau woods. And as a bonus, if you hawk watch at Laba, um, you'll probably see as, on some days literally thousands and thousands of overhead migrating sandhill cranes. So when when are the birds at Laba? When do the birds come through Laba? Um, that last graphic was sort of hard to read, so let me enhance it for you. Um, the birds in January, about 47 species have been recorded. It goes up by two in February. You can see the big jump there in March. I cannot read April because of the way this screen is set up. So I think it's about 159. May it goes up to 179. June, we're back down to 86. And July, we're definitely only at breeding birds, maybe a few stragglers at 69. Um, August, I think, goes up to 96. Again, I can't read the screen. September, we hit the fall peak. That's 135 species come through the bar. This is for all years. October, 122. Um, November is 79. And then December goes back down to, you tell me, I can't read the screen. So where are the birds at Laba? Again, this is where the birds are at Laba. So in summer and fall, how do I bird Laba woods? Um, this is where the birds are at Laba, the blue pin. And this is the typical route that I would take. Uh, and this route will go into effect sometime in, in late, mid late June. And I would use this until uh, I might switch over for a bit to the spring schedule that you're going to see a little later um, for September. But basically, I'll use this for more or less nine months a year. So I start at Grove Three, that's where the S is. I move up to the um, Weber Spur Trail and just past the Weber Spur Trail to look at the grass for sparrows. Um, the south end of the Weber Spur is the area just going south on, on the um, railroad grade. I walk north on the railroad grade. I only go about halfway. And then I spend most of my time walking along the river on the south side of the river uh, in what we call the Laba area or the slough section. And um, I marked a couple of, you know, all along the river can be good and uh, unexpected. It gives you great views of the north side of the river as well. I marked number three. There's an area there where there's a bunch of feeders in the homes in the area just north of there. And the birds go to number three, especially winter finches and other unexpected treats will go there and hang out, the winter sparrows. And sometimes they hang out in number. It can be very loud, great place for pine siskin. Uh, number four is a, 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 an herbaceous layer area with lots of seeds from our replanting work. And we call that the Red Oak Hill and Hawthorn Grove because uh, it used to have a bunch of hawthorns. And that area is also a really great place for sparrows and winter passerines. No matter what time of year it is, I always go down to number five, which is the slough. And then I come back on usually the bottom trail that goes around the slough and up to where I started. So that's the um, path I take. And when, you, when, you're, when you're birding at Laba in the summer, basically summer birding is all about finding um, you know, breeding birds uh, or unexpected lingering migrants. Um, Laba in the immediate surrounding area again has 45 to 55 um, breeding bird species depending on the year. 
Um, the hub of our summer activity is in the SLU, which I've mentioned now a couple of times. Um, the SLU is, is where we get feeding waders, uh, young duck and geese, and we're praying for water because the SLU is drying up really fast and we could be robbed of that opportunity to see those birds this year. Um, you see this black crown night heron right in the middle. Um, it's got a beautiful panfish that was taken in the, the, the middle of the summer when it was getting food to take back to its nesting colony down at Lincoln Park Zoo. The Lincoln Park Zoo, um, black crown night herons fly in almost every night already. There are four of them that are coming in and other birds will start following them. But the pickings may be scarce this year if the water level keeps going down. Um, the trussle is also a really good place, especially late summer. Uh, you wanna check for all the fly catching birds because insects hatch out of the river when it gets down to its low point and that's where um, birds will hawk for insects. And that's really the deal with summer birding, which is why only a few people and myself spend much time birding there in the summer. Fall migration is a little more exciting um, because we get the fall migrants coming through. Um, after the summer lull, we go up to 96 species in August, 135 in September, and 122 in October. Um, August is really a great month, and you can see all kinds of um, fall warblers. You can practice figuring out the difference between the um, warbler that is yellow with um, two wing bars and has orange legs, and the yellowish warbler with two wing bars that has dark legs. There are excellent observation opportunities for immature birds that come through the Ba on their way um, south, and um, it's a very enjoyable place to go birding from pretty much um, late August through early November. Again, the slough, the trussle um, along the river are, are the, uh, and the edges are the places that you'd want to bird. Winter birding. You can see it's the exact same map that I showed you for summer and fall birding, except there's snow. Um, and it runs from basically mid-December through mid-March. Winter birding at Laba is all about the overwintering non-migrant non birds or the birds that come to Laba from further north. And though we have about 65 species of birds that have been seen in Laba woods during that winter season, um, more than half of those are birds that are, are um, lingering birds that we have in December early before they leave or they're early arriving March birds, but they fall into the winter season. Um, the real winter birds, hardcore January winter birding, comprises of about 20 to 25 species of birds, woodpeckers, nuthatches, finches, some of the local raptors, sparrows, cardinals, robins, starlings, pigeons, morning doves, um, overhead gulls, and if we're doing um, uh, the Canada geese, the, the mallard ducks, and if we're doing a hawk watch, we might see um, uh, some things fly over um, like a loon or some of the uh, wintering ducks. Spring migration. Spring migration, Jeff, tell us about spring migration because I know, and you all know, that's why you're really here. And spring migration this year has been great at Laba Woods. Um, 33 species of warbler already, 166 species, three new species to our, our bird list, uh, putting us at 214 total species for the site now. So it's been an exciting year and we've had, I think, did I say 166 species have already been recorded. A bunch of the fly catchers haven't come through. We may set a new record this year. And part of that is because the broad bill hummingbird brought out a lot of people who got to, familiar with Le bon and said, you know what? This is, this is a nice place to go birding. Lots of great passerines lots of habitat, and I don't have to be elbow to elbow with every person that goes down to Montrose to jockey for position to get their photographs of X warbler or Y warbler. If you want to see birds and have some photographic opportunities, Laba is a little harder to bird, but it's got all the birds and a heck of a lot more peace and quiet. So how do you bird Laba Woods? Spring migration depends on how much time you have. And I'm showing you the full route. This route would be the route that I would use on the spring bird count. This is a full route. It'd probably take between four and five hours to do. Most people don't have that much time, but I wanna to explain to you where I go and then I'll tell you a few shortcuts or things that you can cut in or cut out. And you can, you can get a big chunk of Laba covered 
in about 90 minutes to two hours, if that's what you have. And that's what I usually do when I'm on a, a group walk on like a Wednesday morning or a Sunday morning. And then I leave a little time just to see what happens. But I start again in Grove 3. And then I immediately look behind me. And number one, we call that the Wooded Island. It's great for holding sparrows, orchard orioles, um, other interesting birds will, will go into that wooded area and they feed in the trees. And you also can get warblers in there in the morning when the sun hits it. So that, you know, while I'm waiting for people to show up, I, I look at, uh, at the wooded island. And then two, we walk up the, <clears throat> the bike path towards the uh, railroad grade and the trestle. And there's some big mature trees there. And there are also some hawthorns in the spring that are in bloom. And when they're in bloom, the warblers just love getting insects out of those flowers. <clears throat> um, three is the south part of the Weber Spur Trail. That is where I personally refound the broadbill hummingbird. It's excellent for warblers. There's a bunch of thick um, scrub on both sides of the railroad, and especially some of the sulking birds will go in there. Wood thrush, some of the golden wing warbler, blue wing warbler. Um, you will find fox sparrows in there in the right season. It's, it's really good habitat <clears throat> for birds that like to kind of hide, but the edges are also excellent for um, birds that you might expect to see um, just anywhere in a forested area, um, like warblers, excuse me. <clears throat> After I check out number three, we'll move up to the trestle. And the trestle, you wanna know the four corners of the trestle. You wanna work those four edges. What's nice about the trestle is you're raised up and you're not looking at the trees from ground level, but you're looking at the tops of the trees. And there are two Siberian elms on uh, two corners. There is a silver maple on another corner and you can look up and down the river and you get a good view of the river edges to see the, the warblers as they're moving up and down the river, as well as things like the Phoebes that nest under the, the, um, the bridge, um, the flycatchers that work the, 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 the area, the, um, the swallows that fly up and down the river fly catching. Now, if I have a full day, like spring bird count, I will go on the south edge, which is number five, and that's the river trail in the Irene Hernandez area. It's a great place to go birding. Um, if I have to pick between five and six, six is the North River Trail. I'll take six over five. Um, I can look in that narrow area from six. I'm close to the river and I can see the birds that are working the edge on that side. I don't know why, but it just works best for me. But if I have to cut one of the two out, I'll choose four to six and then I'll go out and around like you see there. And then I may or may not do um, number seven, which is the north part of the Weber Spur Trail. What's it, what it's good for is things like um, cuckoos and finches and vireos and some of the, the, the um, warblers that like wetland habitat. If I'm trying to get marsh wren or sedge wren or um, you know, the rare occasions of a, a sora or a Virginia rail, um, you can see those that cluster of blue dots up there. That's where those things come from. But I might go four, six, and then right to eight. And that's the Bluff Trail. Um, is, uh, we call it the uh, Northwest Bluff Trail. And there's a bunch of very high mature oaks there. Great for Black Burnie and Cape May. Um, all, all the birds you'd expect in high oak areas. And um, so that's worth looking at. Again, on a full day, I will go out nine. And that's um, further west on the, the river and Bluff Trail in the Saugonash part of Labaw Woods. But I would say in a typical spring day, I go S1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. And then I'll come back to 4. And then from 4, I'm going to go along the river trail on the south side of the river. And I've broken that river trail just into three pieces. So you can see that, uh, 10, 11, and 12. And 10, 11, and 12 are basically that river trail, the east side of it, the central part of it, and uh, number 12 is the far um, west side of the, the river trail on the south side of Laba Woods. Um, then up to 13 is what I refer to and we all call Red Oak Hill. There's a couple of large red oaks. That is a great area for, again, warblers, 
and thrushes love to be up in that area. It's a particularly good place for a black-throated blue. Almost every year I get at least one in that area. So I might go out, depending on if I'm looking for fly catchers, like I will be in a couple of weeks, or actually a couple of days, on 14, which we, record, we call that the Cicero um, Gorge. It's kind of a joke. It's not a gorge, but it's a little lower area that runs along the highway, and it goes all the way out to Cicero Avenue, and they put the bike path in there now. It used to be a little better birding habitat, but we still get fly catchers and vireos in there, and because you're along the river, you never know what you're going to see. Um, I would then come back to area 15, and area 15 is basically the, the lawn out in front of Grove 1. The lawn isn't always so good, though. If it's a really wet year, you might get some shorebirds out there, and you might get some interesting sparrows. Um, we've had western meadowlark, we've had brewer's um, blackbird, we've had rusty blackbird out there, but the edge is the most important part of that area. Um, this year, the best edge bird was the clay-colored sparrow that we had over there. And then, you know, from there, I, I walk down to the slough, and that's number 16. Now, so for those of you who are looking to conserve time a little bit, um, again, I'm going to run through this quick, see if you're keeping up. Um, S is where you start. Then I'd go 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then I'd go back. I might skip 13 and go back to 16, or, though it's not marked on here, pay attention, you can go from 11 to 16 on a path that is not marked. So if you have limited time, you go, you know, the, 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 the four, six, eight, 10, 11, 16, and then you can come back out to 18 and call it a day. So those are the different areas of Labau Woods. By the way, 17 is just the um, north parking lot trees. There's a bunch of large oak and maple trees they attract warblers in the spring. It's always worth looking. Plus there are a bunch of elm trees. Elm trees have elm bud worm and the warblers and the vireos love elm bud worm for meals. Same with number 18. That is sometimes referred to as the electric elm tree. It's a big old standalone oak tree. And sometimes the elm bud worm literally fall out of the tree onto the parking lot and I have seen days where pine warblers, um, pine siskins, finches, all kinds of other warblers are just picking the elm budworm off the blacktop and eating them. They don't even go into the tree. And that brings you back to the start. So for those of you who are looking and would like to see some of this language, here it is. Um, maybe um, if some of you want, I can email these two slides to you. I can put this together. Um, if a number of you send me your, your email, I'll get this to you. But, but this is this is the Laba, this is the Laba spring migration path. This is how you bird Laba woods. So um, spring migration. The migrants start trickling to Laba woods in March, um, more birds in early April, and the floodgates have opened wide up now. And through the end of May, it's fantastic. This year at Labau Woods, for the first time ever, we had one day where all observers had 102 species of migrants in Labau Woods, which is phenomenal. I also tied my all-time high record seeing 83 species of birds in one day at Labau Woods on spring, uh, spring bird count, which was two Saturdays ago, on the 7th, I think it was. Um, we, we, we see a lot of birds. If you're looking to see migrant passerines, Laba is a great place to go. And we still have the fly catchers that come through this year. We've seen a few, but not many. I think the first alder was rep reported today. No one's seen an olive sighted yet. We get, a, we get one every year. Um, so it's a wonderful place to do spring birding. Um, Laba has 182 species of bird in May with an average year of about 160 to 170. I think we'll set an all time record this year, thanks to things like turkey, Western tanager, broad bill hummingbird. Um, we're, we're going to have a very good May. And many birds are setting up their breeding territories. Um, for example, today I was showing some people where there is a, a ruby-throated hummingbird on the nest. You'll never find it, but it's there if you know where to look. And it's just a, it's a wonderful treat to see a bird so small in a nest that doesn't look like anything more 
than a knot on a branch of a tree. Um, over the months of April and May, Labau will regularly host again 35 species of warblers. This year it's already at 33, um, but most years 30 to 33 species. You're not gonna get that in a day. I think my best day was 24, but that's a pretty good day of warblers. My best day this year was 22, and that was on Saturday or Sunday this last weekend. We had a very good weekend this weekend. Today was a day I would love, love to Bennett Laba. The bird, the bird sound was everywhere this morning when I did a bird tour for a few folks from seven until about 9.30. Um, I'm, I saw 60 species of bird just in two hours. And if I had spent a little more time, I'm sure we could have pushed it up to 80 species. There were birds everywhere and they were singing loudly. In a typical spring, one can see all the area thrushes, flycatchers, sparrows, vireos, and all the other expected spring passerine migrants. And Laba is, as you can guess, best for passerines um, and woodland birds because they pass through that area. Plus there's the slough for waders and some waterfowl. But you know, Laba Woods is definitely short on regular waterfowl habitat. And we only get four shorebirds. Um, and and, and you know, one is a killdeer, one is a woodcock. They don't need water. They're really never on a shore. And then we get um, spotted sandpiper and solitary sandpiper. Though this year, um, somebody got a great set of photos of a um, greater yellow legs in the slough as well. So that's the Ba's spring migration. We get great birds and we get great views of great birds. And you're not elbow to elbow with 400 other birders. That's the play I'm making for why you want to go to Laba. Should you want to learn more about Laba, you can go to eBird and there is a printable checklist. There's also a printable checklist with photos and they're both available. Um, I've got the, 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 the codes here, but I know no one's going to get them written down. If you know how to use eBird, you can go in and manipulate it. Go to Laba's the hotspot, look for the checklist and you can print one up yourself. It's about four pages long. And I just like to end with, you know, Laba has surprises like every place where people go birding. Um, you know, over the years, um, I've had the joy of seeing a yellow crown night heron. Um, another one was reported there just the other day. I did not see it. A Townsend's warbler. Um, imagine the surprise that I pulled in the parking lot one day and saw a large um, gull flying over the parking lot, except that large gull was very large and it was an American pelican. What was an American pelican doing flying over Laba Woods parking lot? Don't know, but that was a surprise. Um, down here in the lower left, um, we've had prairie warblers twice in Laba Woods. Um, they're definitely off course, but they need to fatten up. And the, the, both the prairie warblers that we had spent all day for one or three days eating the elm budworm on an elm tree in the slough. Uh, Fran Morell once had a bobolink at Laba. Again, a grassland bird shouldn't be there, but yeah, hey, they show up once in a while. Um, and then you can see again that uh, Northern goshawk that came one March, that was definitely a surprise. And then the last photo that I can't see, but I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Um, there was one May day where we had a Swainson's warbler, which is not an expected warbler at Laba. And it spent about uh, two hours at Laba before it flew away. So we do get surprises, but none of the surprises are ever probably going to be as big as the surprise that Nathan Goldberg had on May 3rd when he sent me a message that said something like, hey, dude, you're not going to believe this, but I'm pretty sure I saw a broad-billed hummingbird at Laba. Kind of hard to mis-ID that. And I sent him a message back that said something like, photos? And he said, no, he didn't have photos. And I sent back a message, no photos. It didn't happen. I still believe Nathan because Nathan's a really good birder. So I went and grabbed my stuff and headed out the door, but I forgot to take a face mask. So I came back to the house, got a face mask. And as I did that, Nathan sent me another text message with a photograph. And I hustled my butt over there and was the third or fourth person to see this hummingbird um, at Laba Woods. It was my 195th species seen at Laba Woods. It was also my 339th Cook County bird, and it was my 383rd Illinois species of bird to see. Laba can be filled with surprises. Sometimes the surprises are common birds seen well, and I think that's the joy of Laba: is great birds, great passerines, seen in migration, 
seen well in peace and quiet. So that's the end of my pat chat, my patch chat. And I thank you all for joining me today. And I hope that you found this to be a worthwhile review of how to bird Labah woods. And I hope I'll see you at Labah sometime soon. All right, thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, virtual round of applause here for Jeff and just that slew of information. I'm also putting in the chat a link to um, our website that talks, uh, that is dedicated to Laba Woods. So you can learn all about uh, many of the things that Jeff talked here uh, about uh, the restoration work that happens there, the folks that are behind that, how to get involved. Um, and so definitely check out that website to uh, learn a bit more about Laba and the work that's being done there to preserve that science. Yeah, and Edward, I just need to remind people that Laba is small. It's only 80 acres. The paths are relatively narrow. It's just not a place that's conductive to taking 15 or 20 people. We used to try, and that was before I be, sort of became plant aware. Um, birders have plant blindness and they step off trail and they kill plants. So we keep the, the walks smaller so that we can preserve the habitat because those very plants are the reason that the birds are coming in to eat the insects they can find that pollinate those plants. Uh, we got a couple of questions in here regarding your map, Jeff. Is that publicly posted anywhere? Yes. For those of you who are on Facebook, which might not be everybody, but for those of you who are on Facebook, you can go to My Years Birding at Labau Woods, and in the pinned posts, you'll find that map. And I'm about to update that map, um, but it's still available. Any other questions for Jeff? Well, I hope we'll see you all at Labah sometime soon. Um, I'm sort of like the uh, ghost of Labah and there quite regularly. And I uh, would be glad to teach you and show what I, to teach you what I know and show you what I see if we run into each other. Um, so I hope to see you at Labah and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Jeff, for your time. Really appreciate it. Again, definitely visit our websites, uh, Chicago Birder, uh, chicagobirder.org and um, chicagoaudubon.org as well, the two organizations that have sponsored this program and will continue to do patch chat programs like this one for sites well into the future as we schedule them. So definitely check out those websites, consider becoming a member if you're not already supporting through programs like this. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we will see you guys out on the birding trail or virtually in a future event here. Thank you all so much.